Uh, we've Hello? just been speaking. We've just been speaking to uh, Savannah, and she says she expects the best version of Hannah Rankin this weekend. What are you expecting from her? Yeah, I'm expecting exactly the same from her. This is a big fight. Uh, it's her first step up in class, so I'm expecting the best Savannah Marshall to turn up. So I think the fans are going to have a fantastic fight on their hands. How difficult has the delay of of the fight been, um, just from a preparation point of view, but also from a mental point of view? I think it's actually been fine for me. There's been no problems. I just ramped up the training again, kind of did that whole sort of groundhog week. <laughs> so you did like the last week of training again. Um, so for me, there's been no changes. Um, it was just, yeah, a little bit more of a delay, but, you know, I thought this fight was inevitable anyway. So I just had to wait it out and be patient. So, yeah, happy. And lastly, for me, just uh, the, you mentioned the fans there. Uh, obviously, no fans at the venue itself. Uh, how frustrating is that as as a competitor? For me, it's, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, coming from a, my musical background, I performed in massive auditoriums with like huge audiences. And then I performed to like two people, like my mom and my dad, when I was doing the solo performances. So for me, it's it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. And having a chance to have seen that the, in the last one, in the last bubble, um, I know what it's going to be like. I know what it's going to feel like, the sort of vibe and stuff. So yeah, I'm feeling like it's not going to make much of a difference. Obviously, if we were at home in Scotland, uh, I would be gutted to not have fans because obviously, you know, all my family and friends would be there and be making a little noise. But yeah, as it is, um, no problems for me. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Arif, uh, do you want to jump in next? Might be on mute. There we go. Uh, I'm I'm fine with this one. Thanks. Okay, no problem. In that case, we'll pass over to Ryan Elliott from Boxing Social. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for joining us. Just a just a couple of questions from me. Uh, look, you were pleading with Savannah to to stay on weight following the postponement of this fight. Was there any real concerns with you that this fight wouldn't get turned around so quickly? No, I think I was actually really impressed that they managed to turn it around so quickly. Um, I wasn't expecting such a quick turnaround from Matchroom, but massive thank you to Eddie Hearn and Matchroom for sorting it out. Um, obviously, there's always the concerns at the moment with the COVID situation that things are going to get cancelled last minute. So to be on the very next show is, is massive. Um, so really excited. And also, it's the Usyk Chisora undercard. What's well, not to be excited about, you know? Absolutely. Now... Hannah, one thing I want to touch on, you've been in with plenty of top names in your career. You've been the distance many a time as well. How important is professional experience in this fight, in your opinion? Oh, I think it's massively important. You know, when you're fighting for the championship distance, and I've done it quite a few times now, you just got to know how your body reacts. You've got to know how it's going to feel when you're in those last few rounds, how you've got to push yourself. And I think that's a massive advantage on my part for this fight. Um, it's something that Savannah's not really experienced yet. Um, so I think it's going to make a huge difference on the night. Now, this fight is joining a, a growing list of all-female domestic fights that are sort of capturing the, the imagination a bit. I know you'd be happy and dying to have your fans in there if possible, but even though it's behind closed doors, what has the response been like back home? Our response has been amazing. You know, always whenever there's a Scotland versus England uh, competition or fight or anything like that, you know, people really get behind it. There's always that sort of like extra fire for it, if you, if you like. But um yeah, the response has been amazing. Lots of support from home, as always. Um, Scottish fans are the best fans out there, in my opinion. So, yeah, I've had huge support and I really can't wait to take that world title back to Scotland. All right, Hannah, thank you very much for your time. All the best. No problem. Thank you. Um, I spoke to Sylvia a minute ago and she said, on paper, you probably are her toughest opponent to date in a professional career. What do you bring to the table that she's maybe not faced yet, do you feel? No, I feel that she's correct in saying that. Yes, I've got a lot more experience as a professional and um, I think it's going to be a different night for her. You know, when you're going through the championship distance, that's where I'm more experienced. Um, I'm aggressive, I'm a come forward fighter and um, I'm really going to put it on her. Also, the difference for this is, for, for me anyway, is that she has actually got an opponent that's had a full training camp to train for this fight and somebody who's coming out to beat her. So I think that's a totally different thing to face in the ring when you've got someone coming out who's coming out to win at all costs so yeah it's very different absolutely do you feel she maybe relies on her amateur experience a bit too much i don't know i think all prof um, all fighters who've come through the amateur system you know like that's where they've had their experience that's where they started off and things um and i think yeah you know that's where you've got your bases and your grounding and stuff like that but 
it doesn't make a difference when it comes like in the pro game as far as I'm concerned a good amateur doesn't make a good professional it makes a good amateur so um, we'll see on the night if that's going to like hold her in good stead for the fight um, obviously it's going to give her the good grounding like everybody says but uh, we'll see how it goes when we get on to fight night and just the last one from me um, obviously there's always been talk with Savannah she's always been linked to Carissa Shields obviously from their amateur fight do you feel that she may be looking past you? I know Eddie Hearn sort of mentioned that could be something for next year. Is that a sort of carrot being dangled that may be looking past yourself? And Yeah, I definitely think, you know, when it comes to boxing, we all know you shouldn't look past what you've got in front of you. It's the most important rule in boxing. So I kind of hope she's looked past me and she's underestimating me and she's hoping for that big fight with Carissa because... All I've got to say is that she's not getting through me on Saturday night and I'm taking that world title home and there won't be a fight with Clarissa. Perfect. Thanks, Anna. No problem. Thanks, James. Uh, next up, I'll pass over to Ron Lewis. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Ron. How are you doing? Oh, yeah. I'm very good, very good. Um, first off, when you, when the fight was off in Peterborough, why did you make the decision to, so, to stick around? Because a lot of people, obviously, when you've been training hard, you know, the last place you want to be around is, is an arena where you're not boxing. Well, firstly, my very good friend Ellie Scottney was making her debut and uh, it was a real blessing to actually be able to watch that. Not anybody else has got to see it in, in person. And when she first announced that she was signing with Matchroom and she was going to make her professional debut, we were all like, yeah, we'll be there at the fight. Um, and then it just so happened to turn out that we were on the same card, but I still wouldn't have seen the fight had I been fighting. So mm. yeah, I took that as a blessing and a real positive option that I could stay there and watch that and be there to support her. Um, also, it's a great opportunity to see how everything's run behind closed doors. It's a brand new experience for everybody. So I think that having that sort of dry run definitely gives me a mental advantage because I know exactly what it's going to be like on the night. So, um, yeah, no, that, that was my main reasons to stay. Uh, obviously, um, you know, you, you've got a separate career. You know, you're, you're not like a builder or whatever. You're a professional musician. And, yeah. and that obviously takes a lot of practice. Do you actually, how much time at the moment do you get to practice? And do you indeed take your bassoon kind of everywhere? <laughs> I haven't got it here with the bu in the bubble with me, if that's what you're asking. Um, no, I do have it at home a lot. And we've had this obviously as a bit of a sad time recently because obviously with COVID, we've not been allowed to perform. Uh, we've not had big concerts to be taking part in. I had lots of concerts lined up just before we went into lockdown. So quite disappointed not to be doing those. Um, but yeah, when I'm focused on fighting, obviously, especially with something like a world title on the line, that becomes my first and main priority. But during lockdown, I had a chance to work with all my students um, online, of course, and work with my quintet and we put some things together um, and it was played over for for kids in a school. So, yeah, you know, we still got to get the playing in, but it, it wasn't the same as actually performing live. So but it's not with me here in the bassoon not here with me in the bubble. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that be the ideal time, the hour between the test and, and when you're locked in your room to actually? Actually, um, actually, you know, be uh, blasting some scales down to the, the people in the next door room, things like that. To be honest, I'm, I'm sure they'd really enjoy it. It'd be something different for them all. I'll have to think about that next time. You know, <laughs> I never even thought about it. <laughs> what sort of shows did you have? Did you actually have lined up sort of concerts? Do you have any tours lined up at all? No tours lined up this time. Uh, it was more to do with because it was literally right before Easter, and that's a really busy time for musicians. So I had a lot of. Uh, big Easter shows coming up and big concerts and things and more to do with like, you know, that, that time of year, you know, religious ones as well. So yeah, I was quite sad not to be taking part because some of the repertoire at that time is really beautiful to play. So yeah, very disappointing. Excellent. Thanks, Hannah. Speak to you soon. No problem. Thanks, Ron. Cheers. Thanks, Ron. Um, any more questions from anyone? I think we've got Mark. Mark Staniford from PA. Hi. Hi, Hannah. How are you doing? Hi, Mark. Um, I'm good. Thanks. I just... I just wondered to what extent you took an interest in that first wave of female Olympians that that um, Savannah was obviously a part of, and did you ever feel sort of envious that you know you you might have wanted to be a part of it? No, I didn't. Um, I came to boxing later on. Um, there was no opportunity for me to have gone into it and become an Olympian. That was never a route that I was like I saw, saw myself or saw myself going into um, I came to boxing later I was actually doing it for fitness and um, then I went into white collar and was doing some of it for charity um, so for me it was something when I decided to turn professional I just really wanted to see how far I could take the sport and I became world champion last year with through a lot of dedication and hard work and a real love for the sport so for me it's, it's all about seeing where I can go with this career and um, see what I can achieve and 
that's really what I was looking at. Never really thought about the Olympic side of things and don't really feel like I missed out on it or anything. Do you think do you think perhaps that gives you a gives you an edge in terms of sort of an extra hunger? Because because fighters like you have had to come through it sort of taking your own risks and everything, whereas the girls on the GB programme are to an extent spoon fed, you know, and, and they get everything, get all the funding, get the day to day life kind of thing. And they don't have to take the kind of risks that you had to so early in your career. Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel like I've got a real hunger for the sport because I'm desperate to prove to myself, uh, you know, what I can achieve. Me and my coach have always worked really hard to try and get as far as possible and, you know, just push ourselves to see what was available for us out there. And yes, I've had to do everything the hard way. I haven't had any of the, you know, the easy fights. I've taken harder options that most people would take early on in their career. But as far as I'm concerned, if you want to be the best, you want to test yourself against the best. So, you know, for me, it was great experience. And every time I get into the the ring, you know, I've I've changed as a fighter and I've developed and I've learned from all those experiences that I've had. And I wouldn't change the way that I've had my career for anything because I've learned so much about the sport itself. Um, and also I've had some fantastic opponents and some great opportunities. Just finally, I'm sure you've been asked this millions of times before, so apologies, but why why the bassoon? Why the bassoon? Yeah, in particular. Uh, well, I actually started on the flute when I was younger and uh, a really nice old lady donated a bassoon to my school. Um, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm bored of being one of 40 flute players, so I think I'm going to take this weird instrument and... I just fell in love with it. It became the instrument for me. So I always say that to people, there's an instrument out there for everybody. You just got to find out which one it is. And the bassoon's my instrument, definitely. Is that the same kind Is that the same kind of individualist kind of attitude which serves you well in boxing? You sort of desire not to be the same as everybody else? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm always encouraging people to be yourself. It's really important that you are proud to be who you are and you focus on what you're good at and how you can improve your skills and abilities and things like that. So, yeah, I like to be an individual. I like to go out there, do new things, showcase what what, what can be done and push yourself, you know, and put, take ch- challenges when they come up.